Okay. I did one of these last night. But I'm going to go ahead and do another one. Just because I thought of a different way to do a certain thing. I just want to throw this out there. Uh, show your skin. Suit your practice kit. Blah, 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 blah. Gus, get down. Now, please, go. Thank you. All the way. Go. Go right now. Thank you. I'm about to, I'm about to do surgery, dude. Back up. Go. Lay down. Um, but the kit comes with this. As you can see, I was practicing last night. I didn't upload that video because it took 30 minutes. <laughs> um, uh, and it comes with all kinds of suture threads. The one I was practicing with last night was, I believe, a monofilament. So, because I figured it was kind of like fishing line. I was going to go ahead and but you got this style. That's the nylon monofilament I was using last night. You got your silk braided. And then you have your propylene monofilament. But they got so many that you can practice with. And um, this kit comes with scalpels and stuff like that. Which you can kind of see that this square here is a little darkened out. And you can kind of see a line here. Something here 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 and I believe there's something over there where you actually have to go ahead and make an incision and then cut it open uh, I'm not going to get into any of that tonight there are uh, I'm pretty sure there's yeah you've seen it on the box you can go to www.trueskinsuturekit.com all one word to find instructional videos, but you know, I'm gonna do it without the directions just because you know, heck, let's just see how, how well my common sense is rolling. But it comes with a nice little kit here, I'm not gonna lie. These are your uh, blades for the scalpel, this is your scalpel attachment kit, tweezers, uh, I guess they're called forceps. They would be a straight forcep. This is a 45 degree forcep. And then these are your snips. So, uh, I kind of just rock out with the standard tweezers and forceps right now. Um, I'm sure that, well, I'm just going to make this known right now. I'm nowhere near a professional. I was always the guy that needed the stitches done. <laughs> so, with that being said, let's let's try this. Well, this is a non-absorbable suture, so it's going to have to be. I take that as it's probably going to have to be. Uh, removed at some point um, but I do notice that there's a little diamond here and there's a curvature so I wonder if that could be something for along the lines of that so we're gonna try this and I was I was doing some I'll tell you what like if this was welding I would probably like be able to pick pick from behind on this but because it's sewing and it's not a backpack and stuff like that not uh, having, you know, I'm, I'm kind of muddling my way through. Some might even say I'm wasting the sutures by not looking it up and doing it the correct way. But I intend to look it up after the fact and just see what all exactly, you know, how far off I was. I was just kind of a test for me. Each of the sutures come with a nice curved needle. And, uh... Yeah, I'm not wearing gloves, even though maybe it would probably be better that I should be. You can see that this thread is, uh, you know, it's very soft. It's silk braided. It's definitely silky. I'll put it that way. So, I'm going to start off with 
planting and needle. Let's just see how quick I can go ahead and do this. Let's uh, I guess we can. I'll try and do it through the camera so I can you know, make sure I got this in a good position so I can see. Um, a buddy of mine that used to be in the medical field used to say when you're doing sutures of any kind, it's actually good to get the needle to kind of pierce halfway into the skin and then kind of meet the skin uh, ends in the middle. I guess, I don't know if we're going to be able to get a good cook on this, but it would almost be like, see, I'm, I don't know, well, you can't really see in this, you might be missing a guy. Thing here, I'm not a trained professional, go look up how the professionals do it. But as you can see, when I'm coming through there, I'm 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 kind of halfway through the epidermis, epidermis, and I'm gonna come in halfway again, and then start sending it upward, and I'll use the tweezers to bing. There's that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that through. I'll leave that set there for a minute, and. We're going to have to do some kind of a knot. I used to tie flies, so I don't know if um, an overhand will work or not. Then again, apparently it's been years since I have tied a fly. Flip it around. Come on. Flip it around. Pull this through a little bit further. Because we have, according to this, uh, we have 75 centimeters of thread. All right, well, there's that. We're going to leave that like so. Let's go ahead and pull some of that back through. I'm going to loop this around. Twist, pinch, and row. And go ahead and tie that off. And I'll just tie that one and loop it around. Twist it. She scents down pretty good, so well, we're going to try it anyway. This is just for practice. Um, is there a knot there? I don't think the knot, I think the knot was a little bit, oh, there's a knot there. So that says you have the first knot caught. Let's, let's just see what happens here. I'm going to use a, um, A loop effect, I guess, would be the best way to call it. Um, I'm not going to do a cross kind of stitch. And if any of you all have some good input to put in on this video, please do so. Cause Oh, I like that. I'm going to be able to use that as the weep hole. That pulled together very nicely, and I didn't really go too crazy on it. I'm trying to do it all by the, the tools because I don't think normally that um, in all the times I've ever been sewn up and watched it done 
which has happened a couple of times, except for the one on my face. I didn't really get to watch that one. I know they used a lot of super glue, which isn't a bad idea. But uh, let me scoot this out of the way. Let's scoot this puppy. Come on, come on, Brian. Let's go. Brian. Boom. I don't know if that angle is a great one, but like I said, check the videos out on the actual website. That way you know what I'm doing is wrong and what they're doing is right. I'm just doing this as an experimental um, thing. Have I told you I'm not a professional enough yet? Is that tobacco? Well, that's not very sanitary. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and lift that up. I like that one. It's a little tighter, but it's not as um. I don't have as much of a bite on the flesh as I did on that one. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see the, the light colored lines, but the angles are actually work. Because I mean, heck, when I was when I was getting stitched up, something like this wouldn't take but three stitches, and I've already got three in here, so there's a good chance I would have already failed ER doctor school. And now we're going to go ahead and finish it up because I have a feeling we need to keep a leaf hole or two in the process. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to come in on the end here. Let's see. Let's see. Push that sucker. I said I got a little shallow on that one. I don't like that. Before I pull that tight, I'm going to go ahead and come around and hold this. I'm starting to turn this into a bloody mess. That's what I want. Pull that tight. I screwed up. I screwed up. I left it too loose. So, anyway, that's just an idea on uh, how to go ahead and mess with the kit. So, a long video. If you made it thus far, God bless you. I'm pretty sure he's going to be here for a ton of posts.
you get the picture.